Welcome to another Code Untapped tech podcast. So you've got me, Ez, my co-founder, Jay. How's it going, Jay? I'm good. I'm good, Ez. <laughs> so today we're here talking about technology roadmaps. So what is a technology roadmap? How do you create one? Why do you need it? And what do you include in it? So Jay, mate, you're building a startup right now. Do you have a technology roadmap? I do have a technology roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was worried there for a while. I was like, I didn't say <laughs> so do you you put one together so why do you feel you need a technology roadmap what, what's the benefit of it to you i mean you're super early right so so what's the value well it's the value is like the technology roadmap for me needs to marry with the vision of the product or service that you're trying to deliver yeah so <laughs> You know, if you're, it has to say, right, well, you can't give everything. You haven't got the capacity and the resources to deliver mm -hmm. all, usually all of what you want, yeah, to your customers at day one, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you look at any app, Facebook, when it faced, first came out, didn't do half what? Didn't do probably 75% of, mm -hmm. didn't have 75% of the functionality that it has now, yeah. a mature product. Uh -huh. Yeah, as, and as you know, as WhatsApp, do you remember WhatsApp? Do you remember what, what, what feature did WhatsApp have when it first came out? <laughs> no, it was literally just text messages back and forwards, right? Yeah, that was it, that was it. So usually you don't have the capacity, but what you want is to get feedback from your users to see whether this is something that, you know, would, would whet their appetite and they will get mm -hmm. value from using it. So that's usually... Um, that's usually what you strive for in your MVP to just get out the minimum bit of functionality mm -hmm. so that people can test it and play and, and what's not. And then you want to, then your roadmap takes you to, your roadmap says, right, I'm here. So now I want to get to here where I can provide mm -hmm. these sorts of services, these sorts of features and really provide added value to my users. Yeah. yeah? So, so you've got your, your now state. Yeah. And then you've got your, it's never really in software it's never really an end state yeah it's not like building a house per se it yeah. isn't it isn't but it's not really because your your end state is always moving yeah you're always looking to provide more and more features and more and more services and make people's lives more and more easier yeah, yeah. and you can do that because software is malleable yeah in that sense yeah so so how do you get from uh where you are now to your ultimate vision well you have to plan so you have to put in mm. a series of milestones that take you from where you are to there yeah and right. these milestones are you know features that you need to build yeah and yeah. yeah and when you say right i need to build something that thing yeah needs to be it needs to be designed yeah it needs to be specced out so what is specking out it needs to be you know translated from you know a pretty pretty picture to a requirement that you can yeah. give the developer to actually build and implement. So that takes time. Then the developer himself has got to build the product, it build this, the feature, yeah, that takes time, yeah. And then you've got to test that feature and integrate it with the rest of your platform or the service that you provide. So all of that takes time. So it all, it, all of these things you have to plan and then you have to think to yourself, well, actually, if it's going to take me a particular time yeah, to build something to provide to my uh -huh. users. Is this the right thing to build now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So prioritization. Do you need to prioritize? So you need to triage. So you need to say, right, actually, I want to get to this end state. And this end state has A, B, C, D features. But actually, mm -hmm. what feature would provide the most value to my customers now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And within and and is also within my capacity to build. Yeah, and that's yeah. really important because a lot of a lot of us say, well, actually, you know, our users could need this right now. Yeah, they could, but can you build it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you build you have it? Time, you have yeah, yeah. Can you, yeah. yeah. So really it's those two things. It's like it's it's marrying up all of the stuff that you want to that you want to achieve, yeah, in your solution and saying and putting it in the right order in the sense, and that right order is value to your customers and the and the ability to build and provide that feature yeah so that yeah. shapes your roadmap yeah and 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 that should really be in line with um the value that you expect to bring to your customers and the and, mm -hmm. and the return that you expect to get from your customers as well and it's something that investors are really really 
uh, focused on as well. Where is where is your product going? How can right. it yeah? How can it expand? How can it grow? Yeah. So I, I think I don't need to speak on internet. Jay covered this whole subject. So that was a masterclass <laughs> in what road map. No, that's brilliant. That's exactly exactly right. You know, um, and there's an element there that you touched on in regards to the outcomes for the business, right? And the value that you drive. And this is the other thing that people ignore. That roadmap underpins that sales and commercial plan behind your business, right? Mm -hmm. Not the other way around. It doesn't drive it, it underpins it, it's underneath it and it supports it, right? So those things are all about how do we push this business forward? But I like to think of it as a communication tool, fundamentally, yeah. right? What you're doing is you're communicating your intentions to your team, to your developers, to the business, to your sales team, what we're going to do, what we can do, when we will do it as a technology group. And exactly as you said, to your investors as well, it gives them a sense of what's coming down the line. Clients, you may well have a client facing roadmap, which allows them to see, oh, these are the features. You don't have the features yet that I want, but you have some of them and the rest are coming. So actually, I'm happy to sign up now because I know I'm going to get those features in the future. So I may well get onboarded immediately. Mm. Um, I think there's an interesting thing there about what should go on a roadmap, right? Because I think it's fine to talk about why we need them. But then when you start getting into the actual implementation, especially technologists who've never had to do it or first time CTOs, I go, yeah, but what, what do I put in a roadmap? What should that roadmap even look like, right? Um, I, I've certainly done them in many, many ways. Mm. Yeah, from a straight line to a complex spreadsheet to you know a series of tasks in Jira. Mm. How are you currently tracking yours? I think you're using a few digital tools to track your roadmap. Yeah, so I mean, I'm a bit cheap, so I use uh, the free version of Trello here. But... <laughs> hey, man, it's sensible, though, right? You get yeah. it done. It's yeah. quick. You've got a small team. Yeah, um, it's exactly. easy to use and it enable it, it does what it needs to do. It communicates yeah. your intentions at this moment exactly. in time, right? Exactly. And so and so that really helps me to track our tasks and, and keep us focused on what we need to deliver and when we need to deliver it. So that's good for mm. me. But I then but when you're um, but yeah, you're, you're really right, actually, about the communication and you need to sort of present that roadmap to uh, in a way that can be received depending on the audience who's receiving it yeah? exactly so you're not going to show investors your cello board yeah so we no, don't no. one, one <laughs> thing right i have actually had that all right i i, I have had that i'm not naming any names I, as an investor, I have had updates that include access to Trello boards, <laughs> and it's just like the last thing you want to yeah. see. It's just, it's just <laughs> right, you're doing work, but I don't want yeah. to have to try to translate your <laughs> Trello board, right? It's just not useful. Exactly. So yeah, so the so having that yeah, so having that um, translation between different levels of the road roadmap is really important. So obviously, mm. your investors, you're probably going to have a really high level but sort of business focused uh, roadmap in your deck. Yeah, mm -hmm. in your deck. Yeah, and that needs to be there. Yeah, and that could be presented in multiple different ways. Yeah, you can do yeah. that. And then, you know, like you said, is for, um, for your sales team, actually, um, a deck is really good, but that deck is going to be a little bit more detailed. So it's going to have mm -hmm. more information about uh, definitely more, um, more level of detail on you know, delivery, yeah? yeah, and what actual features that they can talk about when they're going to talk to uh, yeah. clients. So you want to, yeah. you know, in that, right, actually, we're going to deliver this feature. And this feature has these different aspects that you can go and talk about. And you can talk about it because they need that. And they need that because this, yeah. And that gets them really excited, the sales team, yeah. But then, and then on the sort of lowest level of granularity, you've got your, you know, you've got your build items, what you're building yeah. and when you're building out. But they should, you're right, all of those things should tie up. So from the lowest level of the tickets in Trello should really all relate back. So everything has, and this is something that you've said to me, everything, that, every task that you're doing at the low level should tie up to, you mm -hmm. know, 
the an out and a business, business outcome. outcome. A business outcome. A business. Right. Yeah. I'm not doing this for yeah for the fun of it. I'm doing it because actually yeah. And if you can't do it, you really have to think: Is this something I should be working on? Yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't tie back. You should be thinking: Is it? And it might be an important thing that needs to be done, but does it need to be done now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's and I think that's um, I think that yeah that really informs what you do on a day to day basis actually. Yeah. If it, yeah, I agree. I want to take a slight segue here because I think, you know, we've established roadmaps are important. We've given some context around how you might create one. Um, well, what kind of goes into one? Creation is a whole different thing. And that we can talk a little bit about how you might actually go about building when you talked about, you know, tasks and jurors and the rest of it, right? And, tri- and um, Trello items. But there's a whole group of individuals out there who go, look, I get it. Roadmap. It's a plan. Um, and their idea of a plan is a Gantt chart on yeah. Microsoft projects, right? And that's the last thing they want to do. Mm. And they lean in and go, but look, guys, we're an agile team. Mm-hmm. We build iteratively. We respond to change. <laughs> How am I supposed to put together a roadmap? It doesn't even make sense, right? Mm. What are your responses to those what, what's your response to those technologists who go, this doesn't make sense to me. Why should I have one? I can't, I can't do it because our whole mandate is to respond to change. How can I bake in a plan, a fixed plan, if I'm supposed to be flexible? Mm. It's interesting because when, I, when we were given the example of a roadmap, a roadmap doesn't have to be a fixed plan in terms of right. right. Yeah, so that's the point that you need to make. So from an agile perspective, so what is... So what do we want to get out of the Agile process? The Agile process yeah, is designed so that you can react to change, yeah? Mm-hmm. And, and that reaction to change is because you've had feedback from users. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But in order to have feedback from users, you would you'd have had to deliver something to them in the first place. <laughs> That's the point that most people miss. Yeah. Right. You would have had to give them something. <laughs> and you would have had to work out what it was you needed to give them in the first instance, yeah? Exactly. And that thing that you delivered to them, you had to design, mm-hmm. yeah? You had to uh, spec out, yeah? You had to assign it to a developer or a number of developers to build, yeah? And they had to integrate it and provide it out and they had to release it and they had to test it. So it wasn't just something that was just came out of thin air. So Mm -hmm. that iterative process has to start somewhere, yeah? Mm -hmm. And and that start is effectively the beginning of your, that may be the beginning of your roadmap. It may be the beginning Mm -hmm. of your MVP, yeah? Yeah. And so, and then, but you always want to say, right, so Mm -hmm. actually, and this is interesting because for us now, uh, for us in some group, we're going to be shortly, imminently actually releasing our yeah. version. Yeah. And we've got a number of, we've got a number of ideas about where we would like to take our platform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A number of ideas. Yeah. And these ideas, uh, sorry, not just ideas, they're, you know, these uh, streams take, capacity yeah yeah and in order for us to and they're all on our roadmap so if you look at our far future you know our our future roadmap is we'd like to have all of these things yeah Mm. but which ones do we work on now yeah so Mm. what's important so this is where an agile process can be really helpful because actually Mm. you can provide the ability for your users to give you feedback and feedback in the sense that say right where where would you like the product to go? What you've got this, but what would you like to complement what you've got? Yeah, to make your life easier, and that mm-hmm. can then shape your roadmap as well. And if that's in line with the value that you can bring, and it's in line with the partners that you want to work with, and the investors also see that that makes sense because it, it's something that can grow and give you more users and stuff like that, then that really helps you shape that roadmap. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. But the roadmap is still there, yeah. And the roadmap is almost like your guiding line, yeah. And mm-hmm. but your but that guiding line can change a little bit depending on the feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And I think you know the other thing is is that outsiders looking in, especially in a company that's looking to raise capital. You know, our focus here is startups, right? So 
I, I'd imagine most people listening are thinking about it from that, that perspective. Your investors want to understand what it is that you're going to do with their money, right? They, they want to understand what, sure. what is the direction of travel for this business? Where are you in terms of your, your progress? You know, what features are you looking to build out? And they may change. And exactly as you said, roadmaps are, are a suggestion mm. more than anything else, right? Mm, mm, mm. It, it, it's, it's a best guess suggestion of where we think we're going to go. Mm. Yeah. And then that might change. But I think there's a piece there about how do you actually put one together that a lot of people get stuck on. And you can attack it from, I think, both bottom down, or sorry, bottom up or top down, right? And meet somewhere in the middle. Top, top down is what are the core milestones? You touched on milestones earlier. Mm. Okay, it might be we want to get a website up because the outcome is we want to announce our presence. Mm. Outcome number two might be we need a simple MVP that completes, that, that enables this feature because it allows our customers to give us some feedback. Mm. Milestone number three might be we need to engage um, this level of the audience by building out this feature and so forth. And then what you have is almost like a very high level set of outcomes that your business needs to achieve. Mm. And underneath that, you can start to think about, well, what does the product need to actually be able to do mm. to achieve those goals? Yeah. And then you can start to go, well, what do we as a team need to do to build out those features? to mm. get to that peak, get to that stage whether we want to talk stories tasks features however you want to do it right mm. and then after that it's just a, it's just about prioritization organization and then present presenting that roadmap in a way that makes sense to you and yours and as that ties in with um the previous um podcast that we talked about where we talked about building a team yeah mm. if you don't have a roadmap you don't yeah. know which you don't know who to bring into your team because Absolutely. You, can't, you can't benchmark them against a set of so we, i talked about i think in the previous podcast i talked about like a matrix of skills yeah mm -hmm. but your matrix of skills comes from the product that you want to build and that product is really a sum of all of the milestones in the roadmap yeah, yeah. So you won't be able to, if, without a roadmap, you won't be able to even determine the makeup of your team effectively to deliver anything. Yeah. So, 100%. yeah. So I totally, totally agree. So I think we are agreed. Roadmaps are important, right? Maybe we, maybe, maybe that's the way we should do these going, going forth. Ask the question at the beginning and try and answer it. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think that I hope um, the audience found that really helpful because I know as a first time CTO, when I launched Neighbor, uh, trying to put together roadmaps was a bit of a stumbling block for me. It was a challenge. It really was. So I hope, hopefully the session has demystified um, the need for in the process a little bit. And I think in all of this, I think it's really important to reach out to your network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And look for, and always look for people who have done who have done that particular thing before so if it's yeah you know, so if it's roadmap building you know you reach out to you know somebody who's got that experience and then they can give you a lot of expertise a lot of help yeah exactly exactly and i, I say this to developers as well um don't get so hung up on the the technical visualization of these things you know yeah i remember back in the day we had to learn use case diagrams and you know yeah. um, all, all this kind of stuff and you'd get so hung up on what is the correct type of box and line and relationship. And you just ended up not, not drawing them. Right. Yeah, yeah. And what I say to my developers is I don't care about the technicalities of how you put together this, this diagram, mm -hmm. as long as I can understand it. Yeah. As long as you can communicate your intent to me, it's good enough. Right. And I think that's the important thing with the roadmap. There is no, one size fits all there is no magic rule to how you build these things even though you'll see all these different companies and consultants selling you road mapping road mapping solutions and this that, and the other as long as your target audience can understand what you're trying to communicate you succeeded mm. and to be honest um a roadmap is actually telling a story yeah mm -hmm. it's telling the story of where of how you want to grow your business yeah that's what it's telling the story so it needs to so a diet and 
there's that famous saying a picture uh, you know a picture can replace a thousand words yeah mm. and so it is about the picture should should tell the story yeah so yeah. In that so it doesn't really matter like exactly what you're 100 right it doesn't matter what tools you use have you have you told the story has the diagram or however you've produced it told the story that you want it to tell yeah absolutely and, uh, uh, yeah that's yeah that's something i wanted to say there's something else all right like, off topic so no 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 off topic <laughs> But anyway, another session. I, I think that was a really good session. Um, as always, that's it from me. Jay, any final words from you? Carry on coding, guys, and I'll see you next time. All right, see you next time. Keep it going. Good luck. <laughs>